this is the finished miniature. The stand is looking a little bit washed out there when the light catches it. You just get that reflective coat. But the greys and the black for highlighting that I'm pretty happy with. And also we'll be going through how to paint the guy holding the banner too. Hi, it's Rob from Brush and Volcom. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint an Orokai standard bearer. If you'd like to support the channel, my coffee and Patreon page is linked below. Now onto the video. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Mornfang Brown. I'm going to use this to paint the Orokai's skin. There's a few little videos that will probably be relevant to this one, so I'll post them up. Probably relevant to quite a few of the Middle Earth armies, to be honest, like leather straps and different coloured leathers. How to do the black armour for the Orokai and that kind of thing. So I'll put up a few links of those throughout the video while we're painting up this one. Next up is Citadel Dryad Bark. We're going to use this to paint the sections of his shoes and his gloves and also the leather kind of skirt that he wears underneath his chainmail. With the leather now done, we're going to start working on the metallics. So we're going to use Citadel Iron Hand Steel. We're going to use this to paint up the chainmail and all of the armour plates as well. It doesn't really matter if you use Iron Hand Steel or Lead Belcher or anything like that, as long as it's some kind of fairly dark, silvery metallic. You'll get a similar effect to what we do for the black armour of the Urukai. I'll link up the video here as well of how I'll paint that up completely so you can see the overall effect that we're going for. So with that done, we're now going to use Citadel Baneblade Brown. We're just going to use a little bit of this to paint the grip of his blade. Use that as kind of leather straps on there. I'm going to use Citadel Contrast Gore Grunt Affair. I'm going to use this to paint his skin. That's a very similar colour to the Mornfang Brown, but because it, it goes into those recesses and pools, does give you those nice shaded areas without it being too dark. Putting a little blob of that in each eye hole too and wiping away the excess with my thumb. But nice quick layer there. Next step for the armour is Citadel Black Templar Contrast. We use this to go over all of the armour plates. Don't go over the chainmail with this. This just blackens up those armour plates and gives them that really dark and cast look. Good thing is when you paint on this contrast you can see the shine from the metallic underneath. And because that's quite a dark metallic it's not too shiny but you still get that metal effect so it does look like it has been cast. We'll add a few little details to that a little bit later on. That should look pretty cool. Next up a little bit of Citadel Nuln Oil and we're going to use this to go over the chainmail and the blade of his sword. So we're going to use this on the Dryad Park sections too, so the hair and the leather as well. If you've not used the contrast before, this is a pretty good section to see the difference between how the contrasts and the shades work. You can see the shades are a lot thinner, and you can see the colours beneath them, they just go into the recesses while the contrasts darken up those colours. So we're going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast and we're just going to use this as the grip on his sword. That will give that that nice kind of light leathery look. It's a really quick way of doing leather on any miniature. And I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo White to paint the hands on the standard too. Now at a later point I'll probably go on and do some freehand hands on here. But for now I'm just going to do the ones that are kind of moulded onto the standard itself. Even though the ones at the bottom right really are the weirdest looking hands you've ever seen. I'll link up the hand video as well. I did a 
White Hand of Isengard video a while ago. I'll link that up below. Now I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Balor Brown, and that is going to be to do the rope on the back of the standard. So very quick layer this one. Now it's time for some Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm going to use this to paint the hand on top of the standard. Now it's some Citadel Talan Sand, we're going to use this to paint the wood on the standard. I always think it's a little bit nuts that the standard is so short and it doesn't reach the ground. So he's just got to hold it up there without resting it on the floor or anything like that. But I am not an Urukai, so I couldn't speak for how they'd think about it. A nice smooth layer of Talan sand will give you a nice colour of kind of a lighter coloured wood. And we can dirty and grime that up a little bit later so that it looks suitably filthy. So we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade on the hand. So what we're doing with the hand is basically because it appears to have been cut off someone, we are painting it up as you would a hand and then we're going to highlight it with some Next we are using some Citadel Grax Earth Shade. We're going to be using this on the ropes around the top of the standard. Now for a little bit of Citadel Wildwood Contrast, I'm going to do a thin layer of this. If you do it too thick, it will really, really darken that up too much. But if you do a thin layer of Wildwood, you'll get a nice kind of dark wood effect because it comes off that little bit patchy it does look like it's somewhat grimy as well as I imagine most of the things coming from Isengard would be it's not really the cleanest of places anymore so I want to stain the hands on the front and the hand icon on the front using a little bit of Seraphim Sepia and the Grax Earth Shade and all for these tassels as well. I did them in white just so they'd stand out against the black of the banner. But I didn't want them to be too patchy where you can do the Sepia sometimes and you can do the a Grax Earth Shade later and that'll give you sometimes little distinct lines. But by mixing the two of them like so it gives you some quite nice colours and quite nice shades and keeps them all together so that when it dries it just looks dirty and grimy. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Iron Hand Steel and dry brush this over the armour plates. I want to drag it so that it's going to catch on the edges and on any of the wider surfaces like the front and back of the helm. Also do this on the chainmail as well and also the blade of his sword. And this will give you that nice kind of metallic shine coming through on the darkened metal. Very quick layer coming up, it's a little bit of Citadel Mephist on red and we're just going to do his mouth. So a tiny little spot of that into his mouth just to redden that up. And then once you have that in place, we are going to be using a little bit of Citadel Druchy Violet. Just to shade the inside of his mouth too. When you put that in you might get too much and it'll just become very dark purple, just absorb any extra with the brush. Now we are using a little bit of Vallejo Modeler Chrome and a really thin brush. This is the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush. We are just going to be doing a few little thin lines and edge highlights on the armour and a few little scrapes so it's taking maybe the edge of a blade going across it and just highlight any of those edges on the sword too. 
So a few little different bits to do with this, but you want a, a nice thin brush so you can get some of those nice little effects on the go. So next up, a little bit of Citadel Dryad Bark. And this is going to be to reapply the brown of those leather shoes, the kind of leather skirt underneath the chainmail, and also his gloves. like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Ballo Brown and this is going to be to mix with the dried bark to make a lighter shade and then we're going to add this to the highlightable areas on the skirt and the gloves and boots. So think about where the light's coming down, where it's going to catch them. We're going to highlight the top edges, not the bottom. If there's an area that's underneath anything, you don't really want to be putting any highlights on there because that'll be deep in the shade. Now I'm going to use a little bit more Ballo Brown mixed with the previous mix just to do another highlight on those leather areas. This is mainly going to be like an edge highlight. You're just going to be doing really small sections, not in any great mass of this colour, it really is going to be just little edge highlights and picking out details here and there, like the fingers on his gloves and that kind of thing. Now it's just another layer of pure Ballo Brown, I'm going to use a really fine brush once more. We're just going to do some little highlights on the top edges of the straps that are around the grip of the sword. Ballo Brown does give quite a nice edge highlight when you've used the snake bite leather as a wash. Now I'm going to start working on the skin, so Citadel Mournfang Brown. So again, like you did with the armour and the leather gloves, think about where the light's going to be catching the skin, where those bunched muscles and stuff are poking out and going to be catching more light than in other places. You can get some really, really great effects on these miniatures. If you're not sure where the muscles are, because areas are quite smooth, just have a little, a little anatomy diagram of where the muscles are in the legs or the arms, and you'll be able to guess pretty much where they are and highlight them accordingly. Now we're going to mix a little bit of Word Bearer's Red with the Mournfang Brown, and this is going to be the first highlight layer for the skin. You can see already the areas that this goes on, it does add that nice little reddish tint to the skin. Without it being too intense. Now we're going to be adding some Ballo Brown to the previous mix. And just doing one final highlight on the skin. So again, think about where the light's coming from, where the highlight is going to be on that skin. You should be able to pick out those areas quite well and give that skin the detail that it needs. That's going to be a little bit of Citadel Ushabti Bone. We're just going to pick out those teeth. Not really going to do too much else with them because they are really really small teeth on this guy so just really carefully poke a little bit of paint onto each one of those and then we can move on to citadel agrax earthshade we're going to be using this on the armor plates just to give them that weathered and dirty look and when you see them all getting kitted out they are quite filthy they're all inside the ground that's been dug up and that kind of thing the orcs don't seem to be too keen on keeping all their gear new and fresh, so there is going to be little bits of rust and discolorations and weathering on them, so the Agrax Earthshade adds some of that colour without very much effort at all. 
Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Rust, which is like one of the washes that they do. And we're just going to poke this into some of the areas on the armor plates. Now if you put it on, it does all go onto the brush quite quickly. So you might find that you're putting a load on and think it's too much, but quite often it dries quite nicely on the miniature. But as long as it's got that kind of orange tint once it's dry, that's no bother. So now back to the Talan sand, and all we're going to do is paint a few little striations on the wood, just to give it that kind of wood effect. It doesn't have to be 100% smooth, the paint, it can be a little bit patchy, it can be just sort of like slightly thinned down or thicker in parts, because the striations aren't exact and aren't exactly the same colour. I can use a spot of Citadel XV88, or I mean Ballo Brown will do the trick as well, it doesn't really matter either way to be honest. And all we're going to be doing is putting those little striations on the rope back in place. Now it's a really not ideal section of video this, because it is all dead close to the bottom and sometimes pops off. But if you just think about the way a rope is, with the sort of like striations and the, the knots and thicker bits, where you've got the bands of rope, it's all twisted together. You just want to be highlighting those and leaving the shade in between and giving it that kind of dark light, dark light, dark light pattern. Now I'm going to start working on the dead hand and it's a little bit of Cadian flesh tone again just to give it that colour back. So make sure that you're leaving the shade in the recesses if you look at your hand, you can see where those sections that bulge out are. You've got the pads of the finger, like the ends of your fingers. You've got the two other sections of each finger. The knuckles where you join the palm, the bulge of the thumb. The same kind of sections on the thumb, the bulge at the other side of the palm, and those kind of areas. Now we're going to mix a little bit of Citadel Deepkin Flesh with the Cadian Flesh Tone and start highlighting this. So rather than just doing the highlights at the top, the highlights are also going to be on the top of any wider areas, so you've got the sort of like, if you look at your palm, you've got that kind of bulgy bit at the base of your thumb, you've got a bit on the upside of the palm, and then you've got the bit where your fingers join onto the palm, and those bits are all going to be quite light because the blood will drain away from those. So if you think about the extremities of this part and the bits that are going to have the blood drain out of them, you want to make sure that they are light too, rather than just the top parts of it. So we're going to use a bit more Deepkin Flesh, mix that with the previous mix, and just highlight these areas once again. Probably doing about 50% of the area that you've just done. Okay, so now one thing that we're going to do is, because it's the white hand of Isengard, or Saruman, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo white and just put tiny little, almost like dry brushed sections of white paint on the hand, so the hand's been stuck in that white paint that they use. We're also going to be using little bits of this to highlight the white hand on the front of the standard two, and also little bits of the tassels and the hand prints. You don't want to highlight it too much, just get a little bit of that white showing through. But you want to do leave it quite dirty and grimy. Final part of the hand is a little bit of Citadel Technical Paint, Blood for the Blood God. And we're just going to put a little bit of this around the base of the hand. Have a little bit maybe running down that post at the back of the standard. Now, similar to Blood for the Blood God, we are going to use a little bit of Caroberg Crimson and just stain the top of that standard and the top of that pole. Now, you can see the standard there has been highlighted. Now, I did some highlights on it. I was quite pleased with them, but as you can see from this little bit of video, once they've been sprayed with varnish, they become quite stark and it just looks like I've painted lines across the ridges, which isn't too good. I didn't like the look of it. So I am repainting the whole standard black here. 
And then with the standard now back in its matte black colour, we are going to start highlighting it in my standard way, which is using Vallejo German Grey as the initial colour. So you want to be thinking about where these ridges are and putting the grey on and spreading it out from there, so the areas that are going to be catching the most light, and spreading the German Grey out from here. And this is essentially what I did with the previous attempt, where I'd used, the, I think it was XV88, to sort of like give that a muddy brown colour. And it looked fine once the varnish went on, as it does, it sets the colour and it made it really stark contrast, which I wasn't expecting. So redo that so you get a nice banner and not the one that I had previously. Now once we've got the, that stuff on there, we are using a little bit of Citadel Null Oil. And we're just going to use that to blend in the German grey a little bit. So on the edges where it's go, thinning out and going onto a darker section, we're just using a little tiny bit of null oil to darken that edge of the German grey. With that done, we're now going to use a little bit of Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. We're going to be highlighting the top of the crests on the standard like any of the little ridges and the edges that would be catching the light, and also the edges of all this kind of tattered area of cloth at the bottom. So you can see I'm do, using a really thin brush and doing a little bit of cross hatching on part of these, and that's just because I wanted to make it look like the material was tattered and wasn't as smooth and flush as you'd expect it to be. It's all a bit ruined and scraped. With that banner finished, we are now going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Earthshade just to dirty up those bottom parts of the banner because I'm pretty sure that they're not going to take as good a care of it as some forces would. So we're just going to give some Agrax Earthshade around the base of the banner and the edges where it might have been leaning against the muddy wall or just lying on the floor. And then with that done, we will be finished. So this is the finished miniature, really pleased with how it came out, especially the second attempt at the banner cloth itself. The grey, as always, is an excellent failsafe and always looks a lot nicer than doing it with the browns and things. So really pleased with how he turned out. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to all the social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel, you enjoy the content, and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.